Cristiano Ronaldo's move to Manchester United has the Red Devil fans elated. It seemed like his move to Manchester City was close, but United got the Portuguese superstar instead. Ronaldo's game has changed a little since he was last at Old Trafford, but that's not to say he's still not a fantastic player. He's become more of a creative player, one who still loves to take long shots, but he spends more time on the ball now, which can be a positive for his role at Manchester United. Undoubtedly, the players will be excited too, and Ronaldo could be a great mentor for some excellent prospects like Mason Greenwood. In today's tactical analysis, we'll look at Oli's tactics and where Ronaldo may fit in and what he could bring tactically. Before we start though, if you are new or you enjoy my content, make sure you are subscribed. You can like this video as well, that is so important, or you can share it, that also helps the channel grow. But for now, let's get started. The 4 2 3 1 formation can be adaptable to suit many different situations on the pitch, and that's precisely how Oli utilises his 4 2 3 1. When Oli has United pressing high in defensive situations, they tend to transition into a 4 4 2, with Bruno Fernandes pressing from his midfield position. But Manchester United will revert to their 4 2 3 1 after a lengthy spell out of possession. Similar in attack, with United's attack in full swing, both fullbacks would be high and wide, leaving the defensive unit giving United a 2-4-4 shape of sorts. It is rumoured that Oli may experiment with the 4-3-3 at some point, but with Ronaldo joining, he may stick with something more familiar, and there's also been questions about whether any of the current midfielders could play the single pivot role. United's wingers will look to invert and take up half spaces during the build-up phase, allowing either fullbacks to push up high and wide. Looking at Bruno Fernandes' heat map, he floats around the pitch rather than remaining in his position, and this also applies during the build-up. He will often drop deep to be involved in the early stages of building before making a forward run. United strikers tend to not play a huge role when they're building up to the creative phase, but against Leeds and their tight marking system, the attackers tended to rotate and interchange to create gaps which meant at times we saw Greenwood dropping deep to drag his marker to allow a runner like Fernandez to run into the space. If Ronaldo plays up top, we don't expect to see him heavily involved in play till the ball has been worked into the creation phase, then we may see Ronaldo come alive. On the counter-attack, Manchester United are efficient. This is a game plan and one that can work for Ronaldo too. Though it's not expected of him to drop too deep to link up play, Ronaldo does like the ball played to feet, where he can play a quick one-two before darting off, or he can have the ball played into his path where he has space to run towards the goal with the ball. He is pretty good in front of goal too, and United can be even more deadly on the counter-attacks. Luke Shaw's form could also be vital in getting the ball into Ronaldo inside the box. Manchester United tend to focus more down the left, with Luke Shaw being the more adventurous fullback. Luke Shaw created 3.76 shot creating actions per 90 for Manchester United last season, with only Fernandes creating more. He also attempted the most crosses per 90 with 3.12, and if he can play a part in feeding Ronaldo inside the box, this could be a huge positive for Manchester United. The two Portuguese attackers, Bruno Fernandes and Ronaldo, could link up well too. Not only was Bruno good in front of goal last season, but he was also very creative in creating shot actions where he created the most in the Premier League with 168. So, there shouldn't be too many creative issues. With Ronaldo liking the ball played to feet at times, this can occupy a central defender whilst Fernandes runs off him, and Ronaldo's presence inside the box gives Fernandes an excellent target to aim for when he's looking to create a chance inside the box. But the real question is, who's now the penalty taker? When pressing from the front, United's shape could form a 4-4-2 formation with Bruno Fernandes pushing high to pressure the opponent's central defender. It's doubtful that Ronaldo would have a great responsibility in pressing but, with Bruno Fernandes' high energy, the 4-4-2 may allow United to press high on the occasions they want to. In United's opening game against Leeds, their press was set up well. Their press was man orientated, which aided to their counter attacks. Here, when Bamford receives the ball, his options are minimal, and if United steal the ball, they too are set up well for the counter attack. 
As the mastermind analysed last season, when United pressed, they'd often trap their opponents on the left. The average position of the right winger was more narrow and central, one indication of this left-sided desire. This allows United's left-sided players, plus Bruno, firing together as a tandem trio once the Red Devils win the ball. They use the touchline well too, forcing the opponents out wide, the near-sided winger, central midfielder and fullback would often form a quartet with Bruno Fernandes to win the ball back and stop the opposition from playing out. As we may all expect, Ronaldo wouldn't have much of a defensive responsibility, but he can position himself well off the ball so that when United do win the ball, he's in a great attacking position to be an outlet during United's counter-attack. So, that there wraps up the tactical analysis, how will Ronaldo fit in, can he do a good job? Well, of course he can do an absolute fantastic job, it's just all about how United will set up behind him. Recently, Pogba's been playing out on the left, but with Ronaldo up top, it would be intriguing to see him back in the middle, given more of a little free roll, which would be difficult without a different defensive midfielder, but nonetheless, it's still intriguing to see how Ronaldo could feed the attacking four of the two wingers, Bruno Fernandes Fernandez and Cristiano Ronaldo. But now we're going to go into Football Manager, I've designed a tactic, it's purely based off how United could get the best out of all players rather than trying to predict how United could set up, it's still a tactical recreation of how Oli set up but we've also tried to use some roles to get the best out of certain players, just like Pogba which you will see right now. So here we are in Football Manager and this here is the tactic that I've designed for Manchester United. It's called RDF's Oli Ronaldo's 4-2-3-1, I couldn't really think of a name. I didn't want to call it a recreation because during the season things might change and then we can do a more detailed and analysed Oli Gunnar Solskjaer tactic then. But nonetheless, this is still a recreation based of their opening games and how they set up last season as well. So it's a 4-2-3-1, we're going to go through the instructions and the player instructions as well. For the mentality we are using a tack in which is kind of helpful for the counter attacks. It looks to get the ball forward in a more urgent fashion and that's exactly what we want especially after winning the ball back. The attacking width is set to fairly wide so we are going to be using our width playing in a more expensive manner but of course not neglecting the central areas too. For the approach play we are going to be passing into space again aiding that counter attack to get the ball into the player's path especially for the pacey players then we can be very deadly on that counter attack we have overlap on the left because I feel Luke Shaw is the more adventurous fullback so we want Luke Shaw to get further forward and trying to get the ball into the box for the main man Cristiano Ronaldo we are also playing out from the back when we are building we want to be a little bit more patient not just hoof the ball forward constantly trying to get the ball forward the passing directness is set to slightly shorter but the tempo is set to higher so the passing distance shouldn't be too long but we also are going to be moving the ball about in a more urgent fashion in the final third we are going to whip our crosses in because we have some great attackers with some good off the ball movement and when we are trying to get the ball into the box we will try to work the ball into the box on occasions when the possession has been lost we're not going to counter press or regroup we haven't selected any instruction there but when the possession has been won then we are going to make our counter movements of course for our counter attacks when the goalkeeper has the ball he's going to distribute it to the playmaker which you will see in a minute should be Paul Pogba out of possession now we have a higher line of engagement and a higher defensive line this enables us to press high without being too intense and without players leaving their position in order to try and win the ball back. We are going to force the opponents out wide like I mentioned in the analysis. We are going to be using tight to marking again something that I mentioned in the analysis something that Manchester United like to do especially when they press high. The pressing intensity is set to more urgent with the prevent short goalkeeper distribution and we are also getting stuck in so that there is the team instructions for the player roles we are using a sweeper keeper in goal who's going to be taking fewer risk both wing backs are wing backs under support but at the left back which would be luke shaw we have dribble more and tackle harder whilst the right back aaron wambasaka someone a little more cautious who's going to be dribbling less and tackling harder as well 
The left side of centre back is the ball playing defender who's going to be passing it shorter and dribbling less. The reason why we are using the attacking mentality so naturally he will be dribbling more with the ball but we wanted to tone that down a little and this would be the Harry Maguire role as well whilst his defensive partner would be the Rafael Varane central defender. Someone that's just a central defender and his main duty is to stop the opponent's attackers. In defensive midfield, we have a defensive midfielder on the supportive duty. He's going to be passing it shorter, taking fewer risk and dribbling less. So he's going to be very cautious in possession. Once he gets the ball, he's going to be looking to release it, but also safely. And he's going to be tackling harder. In central midfield for the Paul Pogba role, I am using a deep line playmaker. So we aren't using a role where he's going to be roaming around and leaving his position because we still need some solidity in central midfield. And that is exactly what the deep line playmaker gang can give us whilst also having an expansive passing range as well he's instructed to dribble less so he has that pass first mentality on both flanks we have inside forwards but they will act slightly different the one on the left has shoot less often so he's going to be looking to pass the ball into the box rather than shooting he's going to be getting further forward tackling harder and marking tighter whilst the one on the right has similar instructions but he's going to be sitting more narrower being more involved in the play as well so on the right i've tried to bear in mind Jaden sancho and on the left would be the marcus rashford role in central attack or in attacking midfield we have a shadow striker which would be bruno fernandez he doesn't need any added instructions he already has dribble more which i really wish this role didn't have he does have take more risk get further forward and also move into the channels lastly for the cristiano ronaldo role again we are using a complete forward if you watch my video yesterday absolutely outrageous i thought ronaldo was off to manchester city so i made a video about ronaldo at city but he joined ronaldo on the day i released that video so here we are he's going to be a complete forward but he's also going to be easing off his tackles as we have get stuck in in the team instructions but ronaldo he's really not going to get stuck in is he but that there wraps up the football manager tactic we're now going to look at the results how well did manchester united do with this tactic So in the Premier League, we won the league actually, we played 38, we won 30, drew 6, lost 2, those 2 losses came away to Arsenal and away to Manchester City. We finished the league on 96 points, Ronaldo scored the most goals for us. In the UEFA Champions League, we beat Paris Saint-Germain 1-0 in the final, Bruno Fernandes the top goal scorer for us in the Champions League. In the FA Cup, we got knocked out in the quarter final and in the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the third round but as you can see in the premier league we scored the most goals we had the most shots for and the fewest shots against us so we attacked very well and defended very well as well for the best pass completion we dropped down to seventh with 88 percent but then again we aren't necessarily a heavy possession based side and for the average possession we are third with 53 percent for the most tackles won we are fourth surprisingly and for the most dribbles made we come second with 158 we had the most clean sheets we conceded the fewest because we defended very well for the top goal scorer in the premier league is cristiano ronaldo with 26 goals very encouraging but Jaden sancho was there as well with 15 goals to his name for the most assists we have bruno fernandez on 17 paul pogba on 12 things we love to see and luke shaw as well on 10 so the tactical plan worked very very well ronaldo had the most shots bruno fernandez had the highest average rating i believe and he had the most man of the match awards because he played the most key passes with 250 for the best pass completion harry maguire and rafael varane both there fifth and sixth respectively for the most tackles one we have aaron wan bissaka so we haven't taken that side of his game away from him he completed the most tackles with 170 for the most dribbles made we have Jaden Sancho in the list and Marcus Rashford very encouraging signs David De Gea with the most clean sheets with 25 and he conceded the fewest as well with 19 now we can look at the schedule the results what went right what went wrong we started the season well but we got knocked out in the Carabao Cup third round I did play kind of a B team but it was still a good enough team to beat Nottingham Forest we also lost our first group stage in the Champions League away 3-2 to Inter but then we went on a very good winning streak we also got a 2-2 draw away to Liverpool which is 
fairly good in your first season on Football Manager. We did beat Arsenal at home 4-2, which is kind of a big team, not necessarily anymore. And we beat Chelsea 4-1 as well at the Old Trafford. We went away to Manchester City where we lost, fairly disappointing. We also didn't get to beat Liverpool all season as we drew at home as well against them. But we did beat Tottenham as well. And we beat Atletico Madrid in the Champions League first knockout stage. Then we lost 2-0 away to Arsenal. We also lost in the quarter final in the FA Cup to Sheffield United. Similar to the Carabao Cup, I did play a weakened side, but the side was still good enough to beat Sheffield United. We did knock out Manchester City in the Champions League, which is fairly pleasing, and also Chelsea. So we knocked out two English teams in the Champions League before we played Paris Saint Germain. And we ended the Premier League with a very satisfying 5 1 win away to Chelsea. For the squad, who were the top goal scorers in all competitions and who was the most creative player? Cristiano Ronaldo scored the most goals for Manchester United with 32 in 41 starts, no surprise. Edinson Cavani scored 16 goals. Sancho also got 16 goals, so a fairly good start to his Manchester United career. Rashford got 15, Martial got 14 and Bruno Fernandes also got 14, so the attacking players did extremely well. For the assist, we have Bruno Fernandes on 21, Paul Pogba on 15, Luke Shaw on 10 and Marcus Rashford on 10 as well. So we got Bruno Fernandes to create, which we wanted. We got Paul Pogba to create, which we wanted and also Luke Shaw. So the tactical plan did absolutely fantastic in this Football Manager save. But unfortunately, that wraps up this video if you enjoyed this type of content make sure you are subscribed i enjoyed recording this video by the way yesterday was stressed doing that manchester city one this one was a lot more enjoyable but also make sure you share this video if you can you can leave a comment as well that helps the algorithm i guess also like the video that's the most important thing i would much prefer everyone to like this video if you are logged into your youtube account but that's enough of me talking that's enough of me rambling i hope you enjoyed the video i'll speak to you guys soon make sure you look after everyone love yourself peace out